Hello and welcome to the dungeon. I'm your Hobgoblin host, Hunter, and this is Hobby Goblin Studios. <laughs> this week we're launching forward into the 41st millennia to talk about the best way to use your Tau models in Warhammer 40k 9th edition. In all seriousness though, I had purchased a used army a while back and this Devilfish was in pretty rough shape. A lot of the guns were snapped off, there were gaps in between different panels from where it was built, and the paint was super thick and chalky. Realistically, it wasn't so far gone that I couldn't have fixed it up and used it for gameplay, but I was spinning with inspiration and decided that a wrecked hover tank would make some amazing terrain. I started by placing all of the elements I'd like to use on a sheet of chipboard and played around with a few different compositions. Something I feel doesn't get consciously thought about enough in this hobby is how the composition can affect your final piece. In this instance, I knew I wanted to be aware of the rule of thirds and use the pipes to kind of frame the ship and help guide the viewer's eye to the focal points of the model, forcing you to look down angles that I want you to view it at. For those of you who don't know, the rule of thirds is essentially understanding that things in nature are never perfectly symmetrical and that the human brain prefers to see things that are off kilter a little bit. When you're taking a photograph, you generally want to put the focal point about a third of the way from one edge to the center to keep the piece a little more interesting and natural looking. This same rule can apply when creating in 3D space. Once I have a rough idea of my composition, I cut out the base and double check that everything fits. basic idea down, I started applying some more elements to add visual interest. This rocky hill will add an interesting angle to the tank and put it roughly a third of the way off level. With these in place, it's time for the modeling compound. This is a homemade paper and plaster mix that will emulate the movement and texture of the ground. One more quick check to make sure everything fits and it's time to fix everything in place.
main hull of the Devilfish had a really big gap underneath it after I applied the compound. So as a quick fix, I wadded up some paper and covered it in more compounds. The paper had a springy quality to it, so once the ship was placed, I could kind of push it around until the gap was gone. And then once the compound hardens, everything will be locked into place. Once that all dries, I prime everything a deep, rusty red. This helps in two ways. Any areas where the primer shows through the ground cover, in this case an earthy red-brown tile grout, uh, it'll blend in and look a little more natural. It's also the base color for the rusty tank and pipes. Now's a good time to discuss basic color theory. In miniature hobby, we all know that contrast is key to a quality paint job, but we usually think of this in terms of light and dark. There's another type of contrast though, and that is color contrast, or the idea that colors on opposite ends of the color wheel, complementary colors, can stand out when placed next to each other in the same way that light and dark do. This is something I really wanted to play with in this build, so using brown tones that have a lot of red in them is a great place to start if I want to add any greenery later on, such as bushes, trees, and grass. I want this piece to feel like it's on a really old battlefield from hundreds or maybe thousands of years ago, and now nature is finally starting to claim it back. This is the 41st millennia after all, and after thousands and thousands of years of high-tech space warfare, there's bound to be a couple of places that would look like this. And with the rules in 9th edition, there's no doubt that most of these wrecks would be Tau. Tile grout is an awesome ground cover for a lot of reasons. Here you can see it can also be used as a weathering powder, brushed up the sides of the tank and into crevices to emulate dirt and dust that got kicked up and then settled down on the tank. It's also very durable and easy to adhere since it turns into a cement once you add water. Another key to contrast is making sure that your focal point is the brightest part. So as I sponge on these browns and oranges, I'm focusing on the front and top of the tank, leaving the blown off engine, the pipes, and the underside of the tank darker. To further differentiate the tank from its surroundings, I'm going to start stippling some off-white onto it to show what little paint remains rust-free. I wonder which mighty Imperial Army destroyed this poor little Vior La hovercraft. The little blue spacemen inside only wanted to help and to 
teach you the ways of the greater good, but some monstrous force left them to be claimed back into the soil. This piece is starting to feel like a memorial to what used to be a very powerful army now decimated by the 9th edition rule. After seeing where this piece was going, I decided that I would add some more contrast by making the pipes a corroded copper color. You know, the really cool green verdigris you get when copper oxidizes? I know I said I was going to leave orange off of the pipes earlier, but I'm actually using a brighter orange here than on the tank. This is going to pull out a lot of the details now, but the orange is really going to get dulled down in the next step. Don't be afraid to let your plan be fluid. It's okay if things change as you go. Usually, it's for the better. Now I come in with some GW Nihilic Oxa Nihil Nihilac, you, you know, the whatever oxide. It's blue green in tone, and this is going to contrast really well against the reds and oranges around it, really working to frame in the rest of the piece. By coating the entire surface of the pipes, you ensure that it gets all the way into the crevices and stains some of those flat surfaces. Then when you come back with a paper towel and wipe off the excess, you're left with a really nice patina effect. I started to notice that some of the areas of dirt were looking a little bit bland and uninteresting, so to break things up, I added a lighter colored sand and tile grout mixture with some large grain into it to act as rocks and a little bit of debris. Then it's just a matter of gluing it down with some watered down PVA. In order to be a little more efficient, I'm going to base coat this rock face black right now so that it dries during the next step and it's ready to be dry brushed. To finish the scene and really cement in the concept that this is a really old wreck, it's time to add in some plant life. I really want it to feel like this tank is being slowly reclaimed by the earth, or whatever planet this is. What better way than to have bushes and trees growing out of it? 
I grabbed my box of Woodland Scenic's fine leaf foliage and started grabbing whatever chunks had fallen off and broken up in the package. And I start to just place them in areas that look like something might grow there. I keep in mind that I don't want to hide too much of the work I've already done, but rather accent it. So I try to keep the bushes fairly small and use them just to fill in holes. Once I'm happy with how it looks, I just dab a little bit of super glue on and it's just about finished. All that's left to do is paint the rock face at the front. A lot of the time, rocks tend to be painted in various shades of gray, and this is fine for a lot of pieces, but oftentimes in nature, things tend to have a wide variety of colors. I felt like adding in neutral gray tones would be a little bit jarring on this piece. I really wanted to keep everything in the warmer color spectrum here, so that the few cold colors I did use would stand out and be a little more unique. So I opt to dry brush brown, orange, and off-white using less and less paint each time. This isn't how I normally paint rocks, but I think it looks pretty decent. Guys, I'm really happy with how this piece turned out. It really makes me want to do a whole army or maybe a game board with this whole kind of theme. I don't know, maybe one day. Thank you guys so much for watching and if you enjoyed it as much as I did, please remember to give me a like and a subscribe. It will really help other people to see this video and I would super appreciate it. Until next time guys, keep on crafting.